I'd like to do a little bit of a review on how di different body systems work together in order to maintain homeostasis. We've done each of the body systems individually, and now we need to kind of just make sure we can make all of those connections. So remember, the body systems do work together in order to help maintain that balance in the body, which we call homeostasis. Let's look at a couple of the systems. Take, for example, the circulatory system that includes your heart and blood vessels primarily. It's used to transport materials, and many of the materials that we tend to think about are oxygen, carbon dioxide, and other nutrients. There are other nutrients like enzymes and things like that in your blood that get transported around to use for life functions. Our respiratory system, primarily thinking of the lungs, are used for gas exchange, which remember the primary structure there are the alveoli, where the diffusion of the gases takes place. And then we have our digestive system, which we think primarily of our main organs being the stomach and the small intestine, which we know there are others as well, like the large intestine. Primary function is to break down organic compounds so they can enter the cells in order to be used. Remember, our main organic compounds are proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acids. And we know that we need to break things down into their building blocks from the major organic compounds in order for diffusion or osmosis to take place. We have our endocrine system, which include the glands, which some examples of the glands could be the pituitary gland or even the kidneys. We have the adrenal glands on top of those. They help to regulate body hormones, which remember hormones are chemical messages. They're actually proteins that get sent into the bloodstream in order to be sent to target organs for some sort of action to take place. We have our nervous system, which includes the brain, the spinal cord, and nerves. And that helps to coordinate body with our electrical messages. Remember, we have our nerve impulses that are electrical messages that get sent through the nerves. And then we also have neurotransmitters, which are chemical messages that get sent in between each nerve, which can help to give it a little bit further control. Those are our main body systems that we discussed. And let's talk about some examples of how they work together in order to maintain some balance in our body. So if we think about one process of aerobic respiration, we have our primary formula for aerobic respiration. We have sugars, oxygen, using enzymes, which get transformed into carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. We have a couple of things that we need to look at. If we take our foods, originally when it comes into the body, it's not in the form of glucose that it needs to be used in for cellular respiration. So our digestive system needs to break that food down into the building blocks so that it can diffuse into the bloodstream for our from our digestive system, which then it can be used in this process of cellular respiration. Our circulatory system is gonna help out because we need to get these products diffused into the bloodstream to be transported around. So we're gonna transport glucose and oxygen to all of the cells of the body for cellular respiration to occur. It also needs to transport some of the waste products around as well. The respiratory system has to bring in that oxygen, so the oxygen is gonna diffuse in from the air through the lungs, through the alveoli, into the bloodstream. So we have these three systems here working together in order to carry out one process of aerobic respiration. Remember, our digestive system really has to start this process off breaking nutrients down we wouldn't be able to do that without oxygen being brought in through our lungs. And then it all gets tied together with our circulatory system, moving it to the different places in order for things to get to where they need to go, including even the ATP it has to be transported around the body to the different cells so that these processes can take place. Let's take a look at another example. So one other thing that our body does is help to maintain blood glucose levels. Remember, glucose is the primary sugar that we use for energy, which we just used it in our example for cellular respiration. Our blood needs to have constant monitoring. So our body is constantly checking the levels of different things in our blood, including the blood glucose levels. And we have our circulatory system that's transporting that blood around the body and it'll transport it to the hypothalamus in your brain, which is part of your nervous system, and it's gonna monitor those levels of the blood sugar, and it will send messages to different parts of the body if the levels are too high or too low. The pancreas is an endocrine gland. Remember, the pancreas is near your stomach. It's an endocrine gland that's going to secrete or release insulin or glucagon into the bloodstream, depending on whether or not the blood sugar levels are too high or too low in order to adjust them. This is then gonna get transported to the cells of the body 
including the liver. So they're going to trans the bloodstream is going to transport all of our hormones around the body. So a couple of things to think about these hormones that are involved. We have insulin, which helps to lower blood sugar levels. So let's say you ate a meal that had very high amounts of carbohydrates, sugars. Insulin would get released in order to lower those blood glucose levels, and then your liver is going to take in that extra sugar and store it as glycogen, which, remember, is a polysaccharide. If your blood sugar levels are too low, let's say you woke up in the morning and you didn't eat breakfast today, which many of you do, your body would release glucagon in order to increase blood glucose levels. So the liver is actually going to take some of that stored glycogen and put it into the bloodstream in order for it to be broken down and used for energy in the form of glucose. So when we talk about maintaining homeostasis, we use this term called dynamic equilibrium. Equilibrium is exactly what it sounds like. We try to keep things as equal or even as we possibly can. Dynamic means that it is going to be constantly changing. It's not static, it doesn't stay the same. So when we think of our blood glucose levels, your blood sugar may be kind of low, so you eat a meal, your body starts to digest it, you absorb some of that glucose from your digestive system into the blood, so the blood sugar levels go up. Your body will release insulin in order to bring the blood sugar levels back down to normal, but let's say you forget to eat lunch, your blood sugars start to drop a little bit, your body may release a little bit of glucagon in order to raise those blood sugar levels back up, and so on and so forth. So it has this constant up and down sort of changing motion throughout the day. The idea is, is to keep the average relatively stable throughout the day, and it responds to changes. That's one of the reasons why we say that our endocrine system is so nice working with the other systems of the body because it responds to changes inside of the body and also to things outside as well. In this case, we're responding to our blood sugar levels. So there are some other examples that I want you to think about. I'd like you to, when you get done with this video, stop, and I would like you to write down an example of how your body maintains homeostasis in another manner. So we gave you the example already of maintaining blood sugar levels, and we also talked about how body systems work together to carry out cellular respiration. I want you to try to think of another example and write it out how we just had on our boards, and we will talk about it in the do now tomorrow.